I thought of making this vlog. As I'll be going for the 30 day meditation course very soon. And uh, so for so for the next 30 days from the 17th of October I'll be uh, not contactable and I won't have any access to internet or phones. Basically I'll be doing a deep surgical operation into my own mind uh, sitting this long course of Vipassana which I have been really looking forward to. I just want to to summarize that uh, the main intention of me living this lifestyle trying to live a lifestyle between a monk and householder with minimal possessions traveling and uh, uh, practicing the Dhamma as much as I can uh, also uh, doing other things that I like like hiking and camping and doing those things because uh, I don't want to fit into the normal world that I uh, had before having a stable job or so called a stable job and working my whole life towards it and putting all the energy towards it and uh, paying off mortgages and having houses and having more vehicles and and uh, climbing up more and more in my career specializing or doing more exams and reaching higher places in my medical career you know, that is not that may be the way for most people in this world but for me fortunately after my heart attack I I uh, I found a different path actually long before my heart attack after taking my first Vipassana course in 2003 my life changed my priorities changed but having the heart attack was uh, like an accelerator to go on the path that I always wanted to after discovering Vipassana the purest teaching of the Buddha in medicine I saw a lot of things old patients, dying patients, confirmed death many many times dying children, cancer patients people who had only a few days to live and talking with them and managing them all these things made me question what's the purpose of life what happens after this and uh, now that I'm not practicing medicine like the way I used to I don't see these things but every time I, when I'm driving I pass a cemetery or I see a grave on the road it reminds me at once the purpose of life and whatever things that I'm deluded by just drops away so this is that is why I chose this life of uh, trying to develop in my spiritual goal as much as I can my investment is in the supramundane developing my own paramis and purifying my mind rather than having a, a big bank account or any normal 
reasonable amount in the bank account for that reason that's not uh, my my goal of course for me to survive and go on to do some work so that i can continue this lifestyle so i'm also trying different things like my etsy shop and uh, trying to develop my youtube channel and so that i can have a passive income to to live this life so here i will put all the other uh, footage from uh, traveling with my wife so that uh, before i go for the course i can present you this uh, i can give you this vlog hope you enjoy i will see you after my 30 day course if all goes well in uh, at the end of november take care my friends sending you all lots of love and lots of metta Track, I think. It's a wrong track, I think. Yeah, yeah, go left. Here. Now we're on the right track. Back. I'm just finishing my meditation now. It reminds me of the time of the Buddha. The Buddha used the word "hukka mula gatova" for somebody to go under a tree and meditate. It reminds me of that. It's amazing to meditate and to live this life. It's amazing to practice vipassana. as taught by my teacher is in Goenka There's a link in my channel if you are interested in meditation please go and see that So thank you guys I just meditated in this amazing place just cut myself to a piece of grass you know the edge of the grass they can be quite uh, and because i'm an aspirin has a bad blood thinner the only medication that i take after my heart attacks my blood is thin so i tend to bleed but once i put a plaster it will all stop because the grass here can be very sharp and some of them have very like knife like edges and i was walking barefoot to get something so yeah just want to go about that just going to jump in the river back again now
friend Roger, he always says, why don't I tell about, you know, the whether a caravan can stay in a park and the mobile reception and things like that. Definitely a caravan can stay here, Roger. The overflow car park and there's a lot of space. And uh, the internet signal is absolutely no internet signal where I am at the moment. But four kilometers, if you go to Babinda town, you can get five bars, 4G Telstra reception. So there you are. You can, uh, for you to do your work from here, it's going to be a bit tough. Uh, well, I had contact with a beautiful uh, this little rascal. Yeah, it's <laughs> <This little> beautiful. <laughs> it's turned red. It's 6.20 in the morning and people are still asleep. All my clothes are wet from the rain. But anyway, my swimming clothes, so I'm going to get into them and then go for a cool, cool dip. I love doing this. In the sense, I like the whole thing of doing it, but uh, it can be a bit uncomfortable initially. But you go and you should make sure that you're well. If you have a cold or a cough or any infection, you shouldn't do it. And uh, like I said, uh, you have to be fit to do it. And most of us can do it. Well, I've just seen a platypus and there's this uh, guy who, who's from this area and he said the burrow of the platypus is there but I've seen it three times now today. I didn't want to come and pick up the camera because I might miss. If you're lucky, I'll try to get one camera. <laughs> 